Kindly sit down. Thank you. Senadora Lorraine, my candidate on Aguna President, 2022. Uh, does it sound nice, uh, President Leandro Leviste? Uh, ang bunga nga parang si my Trump pati. Ang kulang na lang yung putang ina. <laughs> Ang Pilipinas po, without the PI, hindi mo ma-disiplina. That's the nature of uh, the Philippines, puro pilosopo. At mas marunong talaga sa presidente. Uh, mahirap yung, ito kasi multi-tribe. Kasi uh, hindi naman lahat Bisaya, hindi naman lahat Tagalog. It's a multi-tribe and a con clashing of uh, cultures and who is the better than the other. But uh, let me just say that, uh, well, uh, I'll acknowledge the uh, people of government dito. Uh, Energy Secretary Alfonso Cusi. Uh, the members of the Diplomatic Corps, Senator Lauren First, what are you First Mother, or no? I think I'll just have to give up your uh, plans and uh, in favor of. Mas dito pabor ako sa Kaliandro. Eh, marunong eh. And uh, he, he, you know, you're very lucky. You have a son who's visionary and who has the will. Ayan ang importante dyan eh. Your vision and the will to do it, to implement it. Mukha atang nandyan sa iyo, Leandro. Uh, better stay out from the girls. Uh, baka masisira tayo. <coughs> Are you married? No, not yet. Ah, married ka na? Wag! <laughs> Do not depri deprive yourself of uh, the choices. <laughs> Presidential advisor of Southern Tagalog, Jose Maria Nicomides, Dennis Hernandez. <laughs> Mr. Leandro, uh, I said, uh, keep it up. You are a visionary. And if by perchance you become a public official, Ang kailangan mo lang is the will to implement and to do it. Director General Charito Plaza, Mr. Roy Oiko, Chief Operating Officer of the Solar Philippines, employees and personnel of the Solar Philippines. Ang pabata ninyo, may isa diyang Taliban kanina galing sa... <laughs> Ang akala ko ang umabot dito ang mauti lang pati <laughs> ay sis dumating na pala mga kasama ko sa gobyerno ang minamahal kong kababayan I thank Solar Philippines for its efforts to advance the country's solar energy industry establishment of the state of the art facility in Santo Tomas, Batangas is timely and relevant as we address the increasing demand for renewable energy. Since developing solar energy projects in the Philippines mostly requires imported materials, it is high time that we begin to establish local solar power factories. Aside from helping us achieve energy sufficiency, this is an exciting time for you to start your venture as we are making substantial gains in our social and economic reforms. I look forward to the realization of your company's goal to be the largest exporter of solar batteries next to China. Your solar products and services are expected to meet the need 
of solar panels in the Philippines and other countries to increase supply and lower the cost of solar photovoltaics. Rest assured that we in government shall continue to support the development of renewable energy and country. Let me cut my prepared speech. Hindi kasi ako, I'm not sold to the idea of making promises that I cannot keep. And if you were listening or just uh, maybe asking questions at a time, and did you remember that I would uh, end early in the debates? Uh, well, the reason is very simple. I did not make any many promises. One is that I said, I will stop corruption in government. And, and I'm doing it. Dito sa administration ko, there will be no corruption. At sinabi ko sa inyo as a guarantee, huwag naman yung basura which were brought during the last elections. But itong sa anak ko, at ano ko yung mga basura nila, yung sa bangko, they are allowed to open our accounts. At kung totoo yung may pera na sobra-sobra ako sinabi nila sa election, na mayroon akong 11 billion, my God, you can have my resignation tomorrow. I will step down. Wala akong pera na ganun. Itong anak ko naman, meron din akong anak na enterprising. At the age of 18 years old, nagtana niya ng isang moro lady. Ang pangalan, Lovely. This is a nationwide broadcast, so I might as tell you, I am not defending my sons. Prove it, it is true, and I will resign. Sabi ko, anyone involved in the, my family na sa corruption, bababa ako pagka-presidente. No excuses, no apologies. Pero yun, totoo lang. Now, all they have to do is to prove, kasi in, in, yung dating, yung, it's a rehash actually of uh, during the last election. Kaya ako, I was the only one in the Philippines who could afford to attack Inquirer and ABS-CBN at binaboy ko talaga sila. E simply, wala kayong makuha sa akin. I said, you can go anywhere in the four corners of the world. You can go to Amlak and the rural banks. Wala kayong makitang pera na ganyan sa akin. I have been 40 years in government, the early years as a prosecutor, then the rest for 23 years as mayor. At sinabi ko sa inyo noon, wala ako niyan. At ngayong presidente na ako, mas lalo kayong privilege to subpoena whatever uh, if uh, you dig up my records and what I earn is really what I work for. Mga mga anak ko, they have their own lives. Itong si Pulong, ang negosyo ng asawa niya Eh, yung mga Muslim vendors yan eh. Tatay niya is a father-in-law niya, si Kalagan, ay Tausog, and the mother is a Maranao. Yun yung mga vendors sa Davao, jars, ukay-ukay. Eh, napasali siya dyan sa pamilya ng asawa niya, ang negosyo eh. My son eloped with the uh, my daughter-in-law, when he was only 18, nawala sa buhay namin yung ta bata na yan. At sumama dyan sa, kasi may lola naman yan, yung muro eh. So he was lost to us. Kaya magkikita mo yan sa pantalan. Eh kung magtanong lang kayo na sa pantalan, palaging nasa pantalan yan, tumutulong sa in-laws niya. Eh walang hanap buhay and he has to earn his keep, and he had to work for the family. 
Pero kung yung mga yung mga jazz o kay ukay, yung pinapalusot ng mga in-laws niya, if that is smuggling, then give me an accounting and I will resign. Walang problema yan sa akin. But what I'm really, am I committed to do is uh, there will be no corruption in this government. I will not allow it. And noon yung sa cabinet level could take you years to follow up. I just gave my cabinet members one month and the directors, uh, mga agencies, bureaus only 15 days. Either you approve it or disapprove it, but let it out in one month or 15 days. Kasi nga naman itong sa, ano, not all, but ang sakit niyan is indolence. Too lazy really. Mabuti lang yan sila ng first grade and bagong pasok. I, I know, I've been mayor for 23 years. I've been a congressman for one term. I've been a vice mayor to my daughter. Yung panahon na binugbog ni Inda yung sheriff. She was the mayor. I was the only vice mayor. So, matagal ako sa gobyerno. Nam, I never lost an election. Diritso, diritso yan. Kaya matagal ako sa gobyerno, alam ko yan. Pagdating niya doon sa supervisory work, tanda na, tamad na. Indolence sets in. Kaya talagang ever so slow uh, to fast track everything, I give them time limitations. Talagang ganun ang then uh, do away with the opportunity for corruption. Meron pa rin. You know, I promise during the elections, I will finish the drug problem in three to six months. I admit that I committed a mistake in my estimation. You know why? Ang, ang environment ko kasi yung nasa paradigm ko about law and order about drugs, ang Davao, ang template ko Davao, I never expected that nung ako na ang maging presidente, ang harapin ko right at the start were nine police generals who were into drugs. Hindi ko alam na lahat corrupt, pati police, lahat. And to think that the very agencies I was expecting to help me, mga Bureau of Customs, ay nagpuposlit rin pala ng droga. Oh, how can I finish this garbage in six months? Ego mismo yung gobyerno ko nandyan. I was, I, well, I thought all the while that it was in Davao na takot lahat to commit a mistake. But I did not know that corruption and all nandoon. So, tama sila. Mali ako. No, I, I'm, I have no illusions. Sabi ko nga sa military pati police, if you think that there is another leader who can do it, go for it. We do not have to fight each other and to shoot it out with the PSG because after all, they are also policemen. Magprangkaan tayo. Pag ayaw na ninyo sa akin, sabihin ninyo, no need for a violence. Not because takot akong mamatay, kasi handa na ako niyan. Ayaw ko yung armed forces mo yung mag-turmoil, tapos magpatayan kayo, kayo lang. There will always be violence there somewhere, even for a short time. Kaya magprangkante, wala akong takot-takotin ako noon. Si God damn shit. Wala ako niyan. Uh, I am 72 years old. Made na ako. I'm just trying to help my country. Kaya nung tagtanong kami ni, tinanong niya ako, you should run for the presidency. And I go, what for? I made. I am way and above over yung mga palakpakan, yung mga adulation. Tapos na ako dyan. 
I, I, I have an excess of that, more than enough to last me a lifetime. Wala na ako dyan. Ako basta makatulong lang. Pero, I, I made the strip promises nga. No corruption. I will go after drugs because it is destroying the country. And if I do not get rid of drugs, I will compromise the next generation. Kasi hindi ko alam kung sino ang hawak dyan. Well, I would never know who would be the next president for the next two or three terms. And in, during my time, it is really malala. And I have that duty to destroy it. My orders to the military and the police was not to go into just one or two operations, police action, punitive actions. I ordered them to destroy the apparatus of a drug organization. Hindi ko matapos yan kung hindi ko patayin yung nagluluto ng droga and pag-neutralize ko yung distribution. Kasi kung may distributors, wala naman droga ang i-distribute, e eh wala rin. O may mga droga, pero wala namang mag-distribute, wala rin. E eh kung patay ang mga drogista, di wala lahat. Why should I be afraid to neutralize you? My order was to destroy. And if to destroy, the police and the military will kill you. That is your problem. That is not mine. But what I reminded, again, the military and the police is that it should be in the performance of duty that you are not allowed to kill a person who is kneeling down begging for his life. That is murder. Itong mga polis at military, hindi ko na kailangan that I, every time I issue an order, mag-lecture ako the modalities and the procedure. Lalo na yung polis, they have four years in the police academy. Two years of that is about criminology. So, nag-aral na yan sila. When I say you catch him, it includes, well, doing the arresting. Then, if there is a violent resistance, they have to defend themselves. Ayaw ko makita yung mga polis ko pa yung dalo ko namatay. And the public ha has not realized that I have lost so many soldiers and policemen. Nung isang araw dito yun sa Batangas, no? Ah, it was here. Yung nag-grade tapos tinamaan yung police na unahan. At alam mo ilang edad ang tumira? 16 years old. I'm not justifying yung sa kalookan. It was really bad. Hindi naman performance of duty yung ganun. Do not commit a crime. Ganito yan. Para lang malaman na, yung mga abogado dito, and they will explain to you further. When you are a criminal, and there's the police, the duty of the police is to arrest. And the duty of arresting is to confront you and to invite you to the station for questioning. We are found to be in possession of a gun. And the duty of a criminal, whether you are brave or not, is to surrender to the authorities. Now, the rule is, if you do not want to be taken into custody and you have a resistance, the police must overcome that resistance para madala ka doon sa istasyon to be investigated. In resisting, lumaban ka, the police is just doing his duty. And he's not supposed to die doing his duty. Kaya pag mag-resist ka, he must overcome the resistance. 
Then if you have a gun, you will just have to shoot you. Ganon yan. At ito naman ang nangyayari sa kano. Pagka ang pulis may inkwentro, he fires his M16. Naka-auto. Brrrt. Tinamaan yung kriminal at tumama siya ng sampo na inosenteng tao. The policeman is not liable for the death of the criminal and all others. They are the consequences of doing illegal act of arresting a criminal. Kung itong criminal na ito ang magbaril sa pulis, brrrt, tinawaan ang pulis, tato, sampo rin ang namatay doon sa bala ng baril niya. He is responsible for the death of the policeman and all others na namatay o nasaktan because of his resistance. Because he is a criminal. And therefore, he must be liable for all the consequences. Ito namang police, he will fight the criminal, but he cannot be held answer for he was just in the performance of duty. Nobody wants to kill innocent person. Kaya yung si, well, itong sakiyan, I have ordered the arrest. Hindi lang alam ng media, but right after it was uh, it happened, I called Bato. To arrest the guys and place them in jail. To wait for inquest. Tuloy-tuloy na yan if it's murder. But I ordered the, poli the NBI, an independent agen agency under the uh, Department of Justice. Yun ang... Now, let us be clear on this. Nabuti trapunta rin ako dito. I said, I will protect those who are doing their duty. I never promise to protect those who are supposedly engaged in doing their duty but committing a crime in the process. Abuses, that cannot be done. So when you make an arrest, it must you calibrate. If you're just using a stick or a bat, then you immobilize him, shoot him in the hand. If he's using a gun or a bolo or a knife, and you think that your life is in danger, that will justify the policeman to kill you. Yeah, and there will be more of that so that you are just put into notice na ganun ang batas. Ngayon, yung masabit, trabaho lang nila. Alam mo, ang police, pag nasuspended yan sila, the day that they are suspended, they lose their salaries. Hindi nakakain ang pamilya. Ang mga bata maghinto na sa pag -aaral. Wala nang pamasay. At bakit po hayaan yung mga tao nagtatrabaho para sa tao? Why would I allow them to flounder? And that is why I give him, when I said, I will help you. It does not really say that it's bringing them out of jail. I will provide for their lawyers. Tapat lang. Tatrabaho sila sa gobyerno, tapos hayaan mo. Kaya man, Ako yung, na hindi, I do not about. Eh, si Jonathan, matagal sa Dabao yan. I will tell you. Ganun talaga yan. Pero yung mga abusadong polis, yung mga polis na nag-kidnap, tapos pag-kidnap, meron pang deal of, deal of sale yung mga biktima. Kung walang pera, papermahin mo ng low life na nun. Sabi ko yan, pinatungan ko nga ng ulo. Two million dyan silang lahat. For those policemen who have committed, committed a crime of uh, gun for hire o kidnapping lalo na, 
Itong sa drugs, maraming laro dito. Planting of evidence, tapos maghingi ng pera, kung wala kang pera, ang deed of sale sa bahay mo, nandiyan na pirmahan mo lang. Ito yung dapat patayin. Sabi ko sa polis, patayin ninyo kung hindi kayo ang papatayin ko. Yan ang simpleng istorya sa buhay natin. Now, you want me to change? No. You want, uh, you will, I'll be destroyed? Yes. I'll be impeached? Correct. I am not. I can be impeached. Gusto mo, barilin mo ako. But I will not change my policy. There will be war against drugs because I have to protect. That's my oath to both it. The, the mass of population ang mga walang tao marami. I have that sworn duty to defend the people and protect the republic. Wala ako. <laughs> Bakit papayagan ko? Sinasabi ko sa inyo ang shabo nagkalat. How did Maute finance their terrorism? We have examined all transactions sa uh, remittances ng kukunti lang. Ang marami doon yung sinoblesa yung babae na pulis. Sabi ko sa inyo, and you have heard me before, every day sinasabi ko, huwag ninyong sobrahan, do not force my hand into it. Do not force me to declare martial law. Kasi pag inabot ng panahon yan, I will really declare martial law. And I was referring to Marawi at that time because there was already a build-up. Alam na ng police, pati military, at sinabi na sa akin. But I was appalled na for three months nakapag-ipon sila ng mga ordinances, bala, explosives, and all. Kita mo yan, on, on the third month. At hanggang ngayon, may mga explosives sila. Doon pala sa tunnel nag-reserva na. And that's the ISIS. At alam nito ang mga military nga nandito sa harap ko. The first command conference, nobody was talking about. We were talking about drugs, we we're talking about, but not the terrorism. Ang sinabi ko, gentlemen, uh, maybe you have just overlooked it, but uh, to me, there is a darkening clouds in the horizon. And it is the terrorism and ISIS. Together with our extremists. On the dot ako. Tanungin ninyo yan silang mga generals. And I was the only one talking about it. Because ako lang ang taga Mindanao. One of the reasons why I was compelled to run was that kaming lima doon, nobody was talking about Mindanao. And it was the most dangerous issue at that time until now. Well, sino na rin nag ninyo na talking about? Ako lang. And I was afraid for our country. Sinasabi ko sa inyo, and you will remember me for this if we fail. Tandaan ninyo, that kung if there is no reconfiguration of our system of government. We will never win a war in Mindanao. And we will lose it, maybe. Kasi babalik na naman ako ng lecture para ang bata. Long before the Spaniards and the American came in the Philippines, Mindanao was already Islam. And pagdating ng mga Espanyol, they tried to Christianize Mindanao. They failed. And they fought a war. When the Americans came, they did the same. And they tried to you know, massacre after massacre, pati yung palangiga. They failed. This republic tried 
to impose order in Mindanao. Only for a short while. Then we go back to war. Why? Ang dream nila may poste. This is a rallying point there. What is it? It is Islam. Pero the birth of yung sa Shabu sa Visayas came from Mindanao. Kaya mas marami akong army na matay dahil when you breach a place, pag inatake mo o e, ano mo yung mga uh, planta doon, hindi kaya ng police, mamamatay talaga yan. You need an army or the marines to go first inside. And that is why drug-related deaths of the AFP pati in, uh, PNP, mas maraming ako sundalong patay kasi nauuna sila pagpasok ang kaharap nila mabasuka pati M60. Nakita mo, there is a rebellion. Look at the arms. Nakita. And sinasabi ko, Senator Loren, na we are already in narco-politic state ang ating almost mga tigaluto ng droga o tigapasa or protectoris, yung mga kadakaramihan, ang mga kapitan. Kaya hindi ako, this is a policy statement now. That is why I objected to an election. Kasi pag nag-election tayo, ang manalo yung suportado ng drug money. Hayaan mo muna yan sila dyan at hanapan natin ng paraan na para patayin o ano para nga pag at, at talaga ay harap-harapan takinak yung mga kapitan let's say kayo yayariin ko talaga kayo yayariin ko talaga maniwala ka kita mo Osamis how many decades it was under uh, the Parahinogs na who were running the show. Drugs. Ang economy ng Osami City, maganda ha? Wala masyadong pobre doon. Because they had a factory not as uh, profitable as this one, or more than actually. Pero kagaya kay Leandro, yung mga mayor doon may factory sila. Druga. Ang masakit sa akin kasi pinapatay ng polis, ng polis ng mayor, yung mga polis na ayaw sumunod. Kaya doon talaga, look at paghukay nila. Di ba hinukay nila yung mga kalansay? O sino yung nakuha na isa doon? Yung isang polis for the longest time missing. Hindi na nakita ng pamilya. Doon lang pala inilibing dyan sa malapit sa... Kaya kung gano'n na ang laro, wag, 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 do not mayor ka, gobernador ka. Sorry. Sabi ko, I have, I'm losing popularity, subi. Hindi ako popular. Ay, ayaw ko na yan. Tapos ng eleksyon eh. You dream of voting somebody else. But I have my candidate uh, come 2022. <laughs> Batanggan niyo to. Lalaban to. I can only support people who are decent. Ako, bugoy ako sa bunganga pati sa lahat. Corruption. Girls. Hey, <laughs> lahat man. You see? Yun ang tumbutin ito because it is really a policy. No elections now. Elections, manalo kayong mga yawa. That's the long and to resort. Why I have to protect 
the police. Noon, bakit hindi active ang police? Hindi active ang police kasi walang protection. Pag nasuspend o kinalaban ng, yun, ngayon nung kay Parahinog, papatayin ka ta, just in kutabato, ganun. In Mindanao, ganun. Pag mahina ang bituka mo dyan, ah, pero huwag mo akong isali dyan, kaya, na. Ngayon na, yun lang man ang tatlo. Kaya pagka, di ba, sa debate, sabi ko, tapos na ako. O itong isa, bakit papalit-palit ng same story? Why don't you just uh, tape record your speech and so that... Uh, Ganun, tatlo lang ako. Kasi alam ko, yun lang ang tatlo. And I will, I am staking, ulema, for all fair. I am staking my life my honor and the presidency itself. If I lose it in the process, sa yung three basic promises ko, corruption, droga, pati criminality, then so be it. Hanggang dyan lang ako. Sabi ng Diyos, it's time for you to go. So wala ako pa. Pero huwag kayong magkamali dyan. Criticisms, media. I will not retreat. Hanggang hindi ito matapos, ang droga at ang mga victims. Ganito yan. Mga anak dyan sa likod. May mga anak kayo. Karamihan sa inyo mukhang may asawa na. Tama? O kaya, ayusan nga ka ng buhok kasi... Kagaya natin, mahirap lang tayo. Pinalaki tayo ng nanay natin. Pinakain tayo, gatas, sakripisyo lahat. Kaya nang ang kanta ni Freddy Aguilar. Kasi pagtanda namin, kayo na naman ang magpakain sa amin. Walang security, ano dito, walang mga health system, Medicare, wala. Para sa mahirap, wala. Walang pera palagi. So kung pagtanda namin, I have to rely on you for my subsistence. Ikaw yung susubo sa lugaw ko, sa bunganga ko. Ikaw yung magbili ng medisina. Ikaw yung magbayad sa oxygen, pati sa ospital. Kung puro gago na kayo, tatamaan kayo ng droga ng baba sa Pilipinas, who will take care of me? Kung pariho basag na kayo at about 30%, kagaya ng sabi ng OFW, tama yun. Kung disgrasya lang yun o kalukuhan ng pulis, wala na tayong magwa, tapos na yun. Pero yung OFW, nandungon sila sa ibang bansa, The father is maybe in Qatar, the other one is in Bahrain. They endure loneliness. Yung iba, inaabuso pa. Tapos pagbalik nila dito, ang makita lang nila, ang anak nilang, you know, alam mo pag ang pamilya na walaan ng tatay, pati nanay o anak, it is dysfunctional. It can no longer function as a family. There will always be dysfunctional. Kaya pag nawala ang tatay, ang nanay, lalo na, ang mga bata dito, vulnerable. Talagang kayang hatakin at lukuhin. Walang proteksyon eh. Walang every after, abigay, o saan na si ano, uli na. They are the earning money. So that they can send their children to finance their schooling here in the Philippines. But kung maraming droga at at available and vulnerable yung mga bata, tapos baramihan na gagago, then my bleeding heart will not allow you. 
Hihiritan talaga kita. Gagantihan ko yung pasama mo. Mahirap eh. Ha? Sabi ninyo, masama ang si Duterte ang hangarin. Sabi ko, inyo yan. Iba-iba tayo because magkaiba-iba ang ugali natin. If you do not agree with mine, well, hanggang dyan lang tayo. I said, there's always, you can assassinate me, you can impeach me or file cases, go ahead. But I will stick with my campaign practice. And I repeat, I will not allow corruption. Pati sa gobyerno, tatalagang hiritan kita. I will not condone corruption. Drugs, criminality because it destroys me. I've been very frank with you. I am not, I'm a lawyer. I'm a trial prosecutor. I've never been an economist. And my grades doon, bagsak ata. But I told you, I can get most of the good, a lot of them, most of the cabinet members are either my childhood friends who was the valedictorian since kindergarten kami, Dominguez. Then I have Tugade, your transportation. He was my classmate sa law school sa San Beda. He was our valedictorian. Uh, si, yung si Salalima. He's also a graduate of my Alma mater natin. E si Cum Laude. Ako lang ang, do you know that long before, Senator Lolan, do you know that long before yung K-12, nauna na ako. Kaya may reklamo ko yung K-12, K-12. I know I was also, in, initially I had uh, my misgivings about uh, the stretching of the years of education of a child. But I was lectured upon by Briones and the rest. And now, sabi ko, I, parang na, I was educated, maybe enlightened more of the, and so I agree that it is good. Pero kung kayo nagre-reklamo yung K-12 na yan, nauna ako dyan, ma'am. Yung mga bata, I was the original K-12. I finished high school in seven years. <laughs> so, four years lang naman nung high school. Seven years was uh, just to familiarize myself with the benefits of K-12. Maraming salamat po. <laughs>